Hello and welcome to Study IQ. In this session, we will discuss about food processing in India. Food processing in India. In this session, let us see what is food processing, what are its impacts on the agricultural sector, what is the relevance of food processing in India, what are the challenges, what are the government initiatives and what is the way forward in food processing in India. So, let us start with what is food processing. Food processing means the process by which value is added to food. Food processing means value or addition of value into the food. That is food processing. It includes packing, packaging, grading and sorting. So food process is the process by which value is added to food in the form of packing, sorting or grading. There are two segments of food processing. Two segments of food processing. One is the primary processed food. Primary processed food and the second one is value added food value added let us see what is the difference between value added food and primary processed food in the primary processed food only packaging is done so the only process done in primary processed food is packaging in value added some value is added to food it can be grading sorting or even processing of food so we will discuss about it later in this module. So some value is added to the food. How is the value added? We will discuss later in this module. A key, a key point to be noted here is that in India, the primary processed food consists of 62% of the total processed food and value added food comprises only merely 38%. So, in India, out of the total food processing, only 38% is comprised of the value added food. The rest 62% is by the primary processed food. Let us see which are the major sectors which are included in the food processing. Major sectors of food processing. Food processing is majorly done in food and vegetables, food, vegetables, meat, poultry, fisheries, fisheries, Milk and dairy, milk and dairy, food grains and cereals, food grains and cereals, plantation crops, plantation crops and confectionery items. These are the major sectors in food processing in India. Now let us see what is the significance of food processing in India. Significance of food processing in India. Significance. The major significance is that it improves food consistency. Food consistency is improved. What does it mean? It means removal of toxins, removal of toxins, preservation of food, preservation of food, ease of marketing, ease of marketing, transportation, transportation, distribution etc so all this adds to food consistency so food processing is a major step in improving the food consistency of india it also alleviates the problem of food shortages food shortages as we know processed food has higher consistency it means it means that you can preserve it for a longer period of time. So, we, we have also said that agriculture in India is highly unpredictable. It is prone to calamities, disasters, etc. So, if in case of any natural calamity or if in case of shortage of production in the economy, this food processing can meet the demand supply gap. In case of food shortage in the economy, the aggregate demand for food will be more than the aggregate supply of food in the economy. There will be a shortage of food supply or supply of food grains in the economy. In that case, a gap between the demand and supply in the economy. So, this will lead to, means aggregate demand more than aggregate supply will lead to increase in the prices of food this will lead to food inflation in the economy food inflation or agriflation in the economy so if there is enough stock of processed food 
what will happen this can act as a gap between the demand and supply of food grains in the economy controlling the inflation and keeping the prices of food in control food processing also helps in improving the nutrition in the households improve nutrition food processing is a solution for the disguised unemployment disguised unemployment in the module unemployment we said that disguised unemployment mainly happens in agriculture what is disguised unemployment disguised unemployment is a situation where the marginal productivity is zero marginal productivity is zero marginal productivity equal to zero we have also seen an example the example is that in a farm if there are 10 laborers the output is 100 units even though the number of the laborers increases from 10 to 15 or 20 still the production remains 100 units it means that with an addition of any number of employees or laborers in the farm the product or the output remains the same or the marginal productivity equal to zero so this case is known as disguised unemployment means that even if more people are employed in a farm or in an enterprise the marginal productivity will remain zero or the addition of the laborers will not add to the productivity of the firm so this is disguised unemployment and we have said that disguised unemployment is one major problem in indian economy food processing can be a good solution for disguised unemployment in the economy especially in the agricultural sector because the surplus labor can be productively utilized in the food processing industry which will add on to the gdp of the country and also the in the national income of the country by creating more jobs and creating more wages for the employees food processing is also a solution for poverty food security and food inflation in the economy food processing can create more jobs in the economy which will provide more wages so it can be a solution to poverty in the economy how food security in times of shortages of food at times of shortage of food the processed food can act as a gap between the demand and supply of the food and it can it can act as a solution to the food security or food scarcity problem in the country it also reduces food inflation how we have already seen that in case of food shortages that is when aggregate demand for food is more than the aggregate supply the price in the market for food will go up this will lead to food inflation or agriflation so this will create inflation in the economy but if we have enough stock of processed food this can act as a gap between the demand and supply that means here there is a shortage of food so fo processed food can act as a solution to the shortage of food grain in the economy and this will reduce the prices in the economy leading to controlled inflation or agriflation in the economy another important significant of food processing is that it reduces wastage of food wastage of food agricultural commodities or food products are highly perishable it means that the shelf life is less agricultural commodities are highly perishable it means that they cannot be used for a longer period of time if this food or agricultural commodities are processed it improves the shelf life of the food processed food means shelf life is improved improved shelf life and this will prevent the wastage of food grains and in times of shortages also we can use this processed food so it improves the shelf life therefore the wastage of food grains or agricultural commodities are minimized food processing will also provide the farmers with better prices better prices for the farmers prices for the farmers even though the supply is more supply is more what will happen if the aggregate supply in the market is more than the aggregate demand this will lead to a reduction in the prices if suppose the supply or the production in a particular year is more than what is the demand in the economy the farmers will have to incur losses by selling at lower prices but in food processing you have an option of processing the food and improving the shelf life of the food so the farmers will so the farmers can sell their products at a higher prices in the market even though the supply is more than the demand food processing also reduces the risk of the farmers 
Next, let us see how is the food processing in India going on or what are the characters of food processing in India. So, food processing in India. The Indian food processing industry uses traditional methodology. Traditional methodology. It means that there is an inadequate use of technology. Inadequate use of technology. In the global context, there is, in the global context, there is intense competition in the food processing industry. Intense competition and an intense use of technology. But on the contrary, in India, the food processing industry is dependent on traditional methodologies and we don't use high technology in the food processing industry. Here a point to be noted is that India is one of the major producers of food in the world. India is one of the major producers of food in the world, not food processing, food. One of the major producers of food in the world. Therefore, in India, there is a higher scope for food processing. The scope of food processing in India is high because we are one of the major producers of food in the world. If India is one of the major producers of food in the world and there is lot of scope for food processing, there must be some challenges that we are not able to use the full potential. Let us see what are the challenges in food processing in India. The challenges of food processing in India. One major challenge of food processing industries in India is that there is a lack of focus on the quality of food. Lack of focus on the quality of the food. Even though in quantity we are one of the major producers of food in the world, the quality we have to rethink because the quality of the food used in food processing must be high in order to attract competition and in order to attract foreign buyers, in order to improve the export, the quality must be really good and the lack of focus on quality is one of the major problems of food processing in industries in India. Another challenge is the inadequate backward forward linkages. Inadequate backward forward linkages. What does this mean? It means that there is no la it means that there is no proper linkages between the producers that is the farmers and to the forward. For what does it mean? Forward means the market. So no proper linkages between the farmer and the market. So, this has to be established. The farmer and the market should be well connected. Another challenge is the seasonality of operations. Seasonality of operations. Another challenge in India is the lack of product development. Lack of product development. Lack of product development. Another challenge is the lack of technology in India. Lack of technology in India. Though there are certain challenges in the food processing sector in India, there is no doubt that there is enormous scope for this industry. Now let us see what are the government initiatives in order to promote the food processing industry in India. Government initiatives. In the latest budget, the government announced that the funds devoted to the food processing industry which is food processing industry will be doubled. From this we can understand there is enough significance for food processing industry and the government has started giving priority to the food processing industry. Let us see what are the major steps taken by the government in order to promote the food processing sector in India. The first one is infrastructural development. Infrastructural development. Infrastructural development includes the creation of mega food parks, mega food parks, Modernization of abattoirs, modernization of abattoirs, integration of cold chain, integration of, integration of cold chain, etc. One measure was the infrastructural development. So, infrastructure was developed in order to promote the food processing industries in India. Another initiative was technology upgradation, technology upgradation. This includes modernization modernization to promote to promote entrepreneurship in the field of food processing to promote entrepreneurship entrepreneurship in food processing sector so technological upgradation that is modernization to promote to encourage food processing in india next is the development of human resources development of human resources this includes 
Establishment of academical institutions. Establishment of academic institutions. Entrepreneurship development programs. Entrepreneurship development programs. Development programs. And food processing training centers. Food processing training centers. Another was the establishment of food testing laboratories and research and development in food processing. That is food testing laboratories, food testing laboratories and research and development in food processing. Research and development in food processing. That is the government has invested in research and development of food processing industry in India. Also various institutions were set up by the government. Various institutions were set up by the government. Institutions. These include National Institute of Food Technology. National Institute of Food Technology. National Meat and Processing Board. National Meat and Processing Board. Grape Processing Board. Grape Processing Board. Institute of Crop Processing Technology. Institute of Institute of Crop Processing Technology, etc. So various institutions were set up by the government in order to promote food processing in the country. Another remarkable initiative taken by the government to promote the food processing sector was the allowing allowance of 100% of FDI in food processing sector. So the 100% FDI was allowed in the food processing sector. This was also to promote the food processing industry in order to promote investments in the food processing industry. To promote investments in food processing industry. So 100% FDI was allowed in food processing sector. As we have said earlier the budget 2018-19 has doubled the allocation for food processing industries so in the budget the amount amount of in the budget the amount has been doubled in the food processing sector the allocation is doubled next let us see what is fssai food safety and security authority of india so let us see what is it this was created under the food safety and security act of 2006 Food Safety and Security Act of 2006. This act lays down scientific standards for articles of food. Scientific standards for articles for food. Scientific standards for articles of food. This also regulates the manufacturing, the processing, the distribution, the sale and import of food commodities. So, it regulates manufacturing, processing, Processing, sale, storage, distribution and import of food articles. It is also responsible for ensuring the consumer safety. It also ensures consumer's safety. It has a unified structure. It has a unified structure. Unified structure here means at the center level it has FSSAI that is Food Safety and Security Authority of India at the center level and at the state level it has commissioners. So in the center level it has the Food Safety and Security Authority of India and at the state level it has various commissioners for food safety. The FSSAI that is the Food Safety and Security Authority of India also ensures the consumer safety and quality of the food by prohibiting misleading advertisements penalizing adulteration etc so it prohibits prohibits misleading advertisements misleading advertisements and prevents adulteration etc adulteration etc it also has a duty of food quality monitoring food quality monitoring it monitors the food quality food quality monitoring it also establishes a standard establishes a standard now let us see how is food standardization done in india food standardization in india the first one is bis 
or Bureau of Indian Standards. The Bureau of Indian Standards formulates, recognizes and promotes Indian Standards. It formulates, recognizes and promotes Indian Standards. Promotes Indian Standards. Secondly, we have the ISO. ISO Certification. We also have the Product Certification. Product Certification. Here you must understand that product certification is not compulsory, it is voluntary. It is voluntary. But for certain items it is compulsory. Compulsory for certain items. Certain items like dairy products, drinking water, food for infants etc. So compulsory for dairy products, dairy products, food for infants, drinking water etc. For food standardization in India, we have BIS, that is the Bureau of Indian Standards. We also have the ISO certification and we also have food certification. Food certification is not compulsory, it is voluntary. But for certain type of food items, it is compulsory. Example is drinking water, food for infants or dairy products. Now let us see what is a codex. What is codex? Codex is an international body constituted by the WHO and FAO. It is an international body constituted by WHO. Constituted by WHO and FAO. WHO means World Health Organization and FAO means Food and Agricultural Organization. So it is constituted by WHO and FAO. Constituted by WHO and FAO. What is the purpose of creating codex? Or what was the purpose of the constitution of codex? The aim was to protect the health of the consumers and ensure fair practices in food trade. Aim was to protect health of consumers and ensure, ensure fair practices in food trade. Practices in food trade. Next let us see what is a PEDA. That is Agriculture and Processed Food Export Development Authority. Agriculture and Processed Food Export Development Authority. It is responsible for export promotion, export promotion and development of food products. Responsible for export promotion and development of food products. Export promotion and development of food products. Here one point to be noted is that APEDA is responsible for the import of sugar. Import of sugar. You must remember this point. APEDA is responsible for import of sugar. Next let us see what is MPEDA. It is the Marine Products Export Development Authority. Marine Products Export Development Authority. It covers fisheries of all kinds. Covers fisheries of all kinds. It promotes their export through quality control. Quality control. Now let us see some various kinds of revolutions. Revolutions in food. Revolutions in food. We have the green revolution. Green revolution. Green revolution promotes food grains and cereals. Food grains. Food grains. And cereals. We have the yellow revolution. Yellow revolution. Which promotes oil seeds. Oil seeds. White revolution. Promotes milk. White revolution promotes milk. Pink revolution for meat. Pink revolution for meat. Golden revolution, golden revolution for horticulture, horticulture. We have the golden revolution for the horticulture. Silver revolution, silver revolution for poultry. We also have the blue revolution for the marine products. Blue revolution for marine products. So these are the various revolutions in the food sector and this is a favorite question for any exam. Questions can be expected from this area. Especially objective type questions. You must also know what is operation flood. Operation flood was 
for the promotion of milk. In detail, you will have to see this. Now, let us see what is public procurement. Public procurement. Public procurement means the procurement by the government in order to sell them later to the public at subsidized rates. So, it is a procurement by government to provide at subsidized rates later. To provide at subsidized rates later. The government procures through the APMCs, brings it to the FCA, that is the Food Corporation of India Godowns, and sells it later through the PDS, Public Distribution System. So, from the APMCs to the FCIs to the PDS. For an economy like India, which is highly dependent on agriculture for the source of income, food processing brings in so much of significance and scope. It increases the income of the farmers, brings in more employment to the economy and brings diversification in agriculture and also helps in commercialization of agriculture in India. Food processing enhances the shelf life of food and also adds value to the food. It also creates a larger market for the export of agricultural commodities from in India, from India helping the BOP situation of the country to rise. So food processing in an economy like India is a is a sector which has to be looked upon with so much of importance.